Sit upright. Learn to sit upright as often as you can. That keeps the body in the natural form, natural posture, just sitting upright. Improves lung function. Improves the blood circulation, particularly to the head, to the brain. And therefore, there is a sense of vigor in the body, a vitality in the body. Of course, the mind becomes quiet, and there is a natural cheer, cheerfulness in you. No, this joy has nothing to do with the mind or the sense organs or the sense objects of the world. So look at yourself. The body is vigorous, kind of rejuvenated when you sit upright. The mind is cheerful and quiet. And you are joyous. All of this has a name. Just check again. The body has a vigor. The mind is quiet. Naturally quiet. Not forced to become quiet. And I am cheerful, with a sense of wellness. All of this you are without any effort. Even sitting upright is not an effort. It is a natural posture. <coughs> now you can see an integration between the body, the prana, which is inhalation and blood circulation, etc. The manaha, mind is quiet. And I am naturally cheerful. All this put together is called Shiva, the auspicious.
Now you can sing in yourself, Shivoham. Shivoham. This is the true religion. Shivoham. The mind is quiet naturally without any force. Now I can feel a sense of wellness in the heart. A sense of cheer without any particular reason. I can feel the sense of love in the heart. Something like, I love all. And you can feel the sense of divinity in yourself, the divine, the godliness in myself, I can feel in the heart. You can sing in yourself. Shiva. The auspicious I am. The divine I am. The spaceless meaning, the formless, I am. And the timeless meaning, motionless, The independent I am. The freedom to love. Freedom is love. That I am. A heart which doesn't know this song, Shivoham. is an empty heart.
Shiva. This is the real wealth. Shiva. The real beauty, Sundaram, Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram, Ayam. The real Ayam. Without this song in the heart, life is a waste, a desert. Shiva. Shiva. Relax. You may sit at ease. And just relax, which means just be quiet. Open the eyes slowly. Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om Shrutis Mruti Purana Namalayam Karunalayam Namami Bhagavat Pada Shankaram Loka Shankaram Avidyakam Shri Radhi Drushyam Budbudavat Ksharam Etad Vilakshanam Vindyat Aham Brahmeti Nirmalam Body Mind and a sense of identification together create the person the ego, if you will. And then the person has a life, personal life. We have, we have said a lot about it, but uh, the blessed thing appears fresh every time. Personal life. What is personal life? We all know what is personal life. That is the life we live. And the personal life has a, a stake in wealth, that becomes a purushartha. The person has a stake in wealth. He wants wealth. For practical reasons, and also for reasons which are not so practical. For both ways. So, for practical reasons you need five dollars, not five million dollars. So both ways, the person has a stake in wealth. In fact, we all came here for that reason only probably, including these Swamis. <laughs> then uh, the person has a stake in pleasures. And that becomes a purushartha. And there are people who highlight these purusharthas in a big way. Uh, purushartha nishchayaha means you, you are very sure of what you want. 
what you desired. Artha is artyate, it is arthaha, that which is desired. The three of them. So you are very sure. So means first you are a person. And the person is put in place by identification with the body mind. Body mind are not the person. Body mind with identification is the person. And identification is false. And hence avidyakam. Avidyaya sanjatam. Or make it panchami avidyaya sanjatam. Avidyam svartheka pratyayaha avidyakam. Okay? So, the person is false. Because the person is put in place only by identification, which in itself is false. So, the person is false. And the person's stake, so stakes may be dharmartha kama, are equally false. The person itself is false. And so dharma, artha, kama, artha and kama, I am talking about artha and kama. Then what is dharma? Dharma in a wider sense, that is not the dharma that the person has a stake in. The person has a stake in a very limited dharma. They define it also like that. Chodana, lakshana, artho, dharma, like that they define. Means, the scripture tells you to perform which ritual for which, for fulfilling which desire. Chodana. In the form of Chodana. Chodana lakshana, arthaha, dharmaha. So that is how dharma is defined. Dharma is a kind of religion. In a way. In a wider meaning, it has a different meaning, but in the, in the, the dharma of the person, which is part of the personal life. Now there is a dharma, a higher level of dharma. You reach it when you are not a person anymore. That dharma is different. Upanishadsu dharma. In those dharmas, you are not a person anymore. I am talking of the dharma in which the person has a stake, means the, the, the religion practiced by the masses, that is the dharma. And in that dharma, the person has a stake, because the person has multiple desires, they have to be fulfilled in this life, and the person is very unsure of the life after death, he wants to secure. This is the language of America, to secure. We don't say so much in India to secure. We don't secure anything in India. <laughs> Everything is left <laughs> to, to higher power. <laughs> we don't secure anything. We just live along. We don't secure. Here they secure everything. They secure roads, they secure lands, they secure plans, they secure finances, they secure politics, they secure elections. They go and secure Fallujah in Iraq. That also they do occasionally. Now they want to secure in Iran. <laughs> they want to secure Iran. Go and secure, we will see. Go and secure. It is a mad, mad, mad world. You want to go and secure it? Go and try. <laughs> you will know that. <laughs> so, so the, the person wants to secure the life after death. And therefore, so, he goes after some religious practices. This is the personal life. You got it? Artha, Kama, Dharma. And all the religious icons, the gurus, they promote this. They don't talk about moksha. They promote only this. Only thing is, they don't promote Artha and Kama. They promote Dharma. The religious, religious life. The, the popular religion, that is what they promote. They don't promote the Upanishads Dharma. That they don't promote. So they have a, a formula and they offer that formula to you. You take that formula and follow it. Formula is a worship, kind of worship. Physical as well as mental worship or verbal worship. Mantra, etc. And that formula they give to you. And you pursue it. Your All your desires will be fulfilled. Your children will come up. 
only your children, not the neighbor's children. <laughs> and you must be a Brahmana to begin with. Very, sir, it is very corrupted. It is a, a can of worms. You better you don't open it. It looks good. This is the personal life. This personal life is false. And you have to understand that. Understand then what? We will see then what? First understand. I have a question like that. Suppose the, I understand that the world is unreal. Then what? It is like, suppose you have favor. Suppose. And I, I suggest I have a, a, a Tylenol tablet and I will give it to you. I have it readily in my pocket and I give it to you. What should I do with it? You take it. What will happen? Your favor will go. Then what? <laughs> Buddha. <laughs> then what? Kya hai? What do you mean by then what? <laughs> then whatever. That is not the point. Is it it so? Then what? Uh, what I, I don't... Uh, I need not answer that question. <laughs> what kind of a question it is? Then what? Suppose my headache goes away. Then what? You are afraid of the serpent. There is no serpent. It is a rope. You know it. Okay. How do I know? Put a light there. Yeah, I have put the light. Yeah, it is not a serpent. It is a rope. Then what? <laughs> Go and jump in the lake. <laughs> this then what is a problem. Suppose I know that I am, I should not be attached to my children. That is the question. I am answering the question in my own characteristic style. Please don't mind, okay? That is a way of answering the question. Suppose I am not, I am now attached to the children. Therefore I suffer. But now I understand Vedanta and stop attached, stop attachment. So I become free from attachment. Then what? Then what? You tell me, then what? I don't know. You tell me. So, this personal life is false, and you have to understand it. Then what we will see? First you have to understand it. There is a name for it. It is called uh, isolation syndrome. People don't pay attention to these things. They are busy with their artha, kama and dharma. Dharma in the sense of popular religion. They don't pay attention to such a philosophical nuances. They are too busy with these things. Many people are too busy with artha and kama. Some of the religious people are too busy with their dharma rituals and all that. That is all they have stake in. So they don't understand the, what is called isolation syndrome. That is what Shankara is talking about. That isolation syndrome that is the avidyakam. You see, I was walking on the bank of a canal. Our childhood was connected to canal. We lived on the bank of a canal, close to the canal. And as children, we go and jump into the canal. For us, there is no bathroom. The entire village has no bathroom. Bathrooms are not there. You have only two options. Take bath near the well. Go to the well, there is a bucket, pull out the bucket, water and put on the head. And that is how you can continue to take bath. Or, we used to do, by the well, we run and jump into the canal. That is our bath, like elephants. <laughs> so, I was, so from the childhood, uh, life is connected with the canal. And uh, it's an irrigation canal dug by cotton, Sir Arthur Cotton, Dora, Cotton Dora, Cotton, that is his name. And uh, while walking on the canal, so many things can be learned by observing that canal. Canal is a flow, and so I was walking. And then suddenly, what I noticed is, there was a, a pool, uh, connected to the canal, a pool of water, a pool of water. This pool was dug by these fisher, fishermen people. So when they catch a fish, 
So they they put a net in the flow and then push the net into that pool. And all the fish are now pushed into the pool and there they are trapped and they are caught. And also the catch they keep in that pool because they cannot keep the catch on the dry land. To keep that fresh, they have to keep it in the pool. So there is the canal, swift flowing water, and then there is the pool adjacent to the canal, connected to the canal, not separate from the canal. You got the point? Now the, the canal is flowing steadily, but uh, this pool is heavy with the scum, you know, with the algae and all that. And uh, the, the canal is uh, flowing well. The pool is a stagnant pool. Canal is uh, swiftly flowing along uh, water. Okay. And uh, there is a vigor, vitality, life, movement, freshness, purity in the canal flow. Whereas the stagnant, the pool water is stagnant, dead, scummy, filled with impurities and filled with dead fish also. No life in it, no flow in it. It is a murky and stagnant. Connected to the canal, not isolated, really not isolated. If it is isolated, it will become dry. You will not have a pool. You understood? The personal life is like that. The personal life with his uh, Purushartha Nishchaya, Dharma Artha Kama, is like that pool. That little pool that, that the fisher, fisherman people dig away from the swift flow of the canal. So like that we live, with a syndrome of isolation. That is the me and mine. Me, the body-mind, mine, the things connected to me, including my God, my worship, my religion, my punya, my guru. That is also part of the pool. People have to think. My God, not somebody else's God. That God we don't like. This is the God. Even within the same Hinduism, my God is Shiva, whereas that, that Swami's God is Vishnu. That Swami, you have to go near and see him. The Vishnu Swami, amazing. He, he is a very hostile to Shiva. You say Shiva before him, he will ask you to wait and go inside and do Achamana and come. He has to purify himself. Therefore, that is the type of uh, fanaticism that this Swami has, the Guru has. Gurus are fanatical. Don't you know that? Don't you see that? They are fanatical. They don't include. They push away. Hey, move on, move out, move out. They don't include. And uh, they are surrounded by a group of Shishyas who keep the general public away. Move out, move out. Very, very bad. Therefore, this is the personal life. I, this personal life is that pool. And that includes the so-called dharma. That is the point I am making. And uh, so, in life also, we dig a little pool of our own. Me and mine syndrome. Then it becomes me and my family syndrome. And then it becomes me and my caste syndrome. And then it becomes me and my religion syndrome. And then me and my region syndrome. That is back in India, not here so much. Like I am Punjabi, I am Madrasi, I am Andhra, I am Telangana. Me and my region syndrome. So this is how people dig a pool for themselves. Away from this swiftly flowing life. Of course connected, but away. Connected yet away. And they 
stagnate in that pool of me and mine, which is called personal life. And they call it uh, existence. This is stagnation. People call it existence. They barricade themselves in that pool with the family, with the, with the family members, with their desires, with their ambitions, with their fears, with their gods, with their forms of worship in that pool. And there we die. People die in that pool. They allow life to go by. Life is flowing swiftly. They allow the life to go by. And uh, they don't know what is swiftness, what is vitality. They don't know. And uh, they don't know that the depth which the river or the canal has. Pool is very shallow, you know. It is not deep. Only your feet will, uh, it will uh, touch the ground. And uh, they don't know the depth of the people who stand in the pool catching their fish. What do they know about the depth of the flow of the canal? And uh, there is an extraordinary vitality in life. Extraordinary beauty in life. People who dig a pool for themselves and live in that, they don't know that beauty. That's why they go after physical beauty. For them, uh, so some of these things, uh, the outer, fo outer uh, forms of religion become extraordinarily important. Outer forms of religion. This I hear all the time. So the door is closed. The temple door is closed. We are sitting there and waiting. Or doing some bhajan and waiting. Then the door opens. What is going on inside? They are, they are beautifying the God. Buddhas. They beautify the God. You beautify the God? You living in your personal life pool? You beautify the God, you don't know what is beauty. So this is how people live. And uh, people think, they are sure, their gurus tell them also that this pool existence is right. That is how we have to live. So, very sad, eh? A student was coming to my class. Vedanta, not my class. I don't own the class. I don't own anything. They were coming to the Vedanta class. Then the Guru told them, don't go to Vedanta class because that Vedanta will spoil your life. There is a name for it in Telugu, Metta Vedanta. And they will tell that you are not the body-mind, you are not the Karta Bhakta. Then you will stop the rituals and it will spoil your life. Can you believe it? The advice given by the gurus. Very sad. So what I am trying to say, I am not saying anything particularly about the gurus or anything. I am saying we believe as guided by these religious icons also that this pool existence is right. That is how we believe. And in that pool we are living, people have to examine it. I am a bit blunt. Give me freedom to be blunt. Give me that privilege and let me have my say and then I will eat a little food and go my way. Then you live your life. I am not going to interfere with you. So I am only asking you to think can you step out of that pool? If you can, you have to consider. Therefore, uh, what happens while living in that pool? We want uh, the pleasurable things in that pool to continue. Uh, also, we don't want the pleasurable things living in that pool to end quickly. They should not end. They should continue indefinitely. Means, 
we put ourselves into a mode of continuity. We want the pleasures to continue, we want the wealth to continue, and uh, when death becomes inevitable, all my wealth should go to my son or daughter or both, and it should continue in their pools. They have established their pools also, it should continue. And then I will do lot of punya, merit, and that will take me to heaven. There I will make a small pool for myself, and that should continue. In that pool, we want a sense of permanency. And in that pool, we develop relations. That is the me and my family syndrome, me and my caste syndrome. So, me and my co-religionist syndrome, you know that. And in that pool, we want permanency in our relationships. We want to believe, me and my wife, it is a relationship for seven births. That is what we want to believe, seven births. Why not, why not twenty births? Some number. A lady told, I always remember, a lady told, this is the seventh, thank God. <laughs> I always remember that. Interesting. And we want our activities should continue within that pool. Which means, we want to stay in that pool, seeking a continuous, continuous, li lasting life in the stagnant pool. You understood? That is the personal life. That is the avidyakam life. Because life is not like that at all. Life is not permanent. Okay? Like you look at a tree. It is full of foliage and flowers and fruits. That is life. Is that permanent? No. The leaves fall. The fruits mature and fall. The flowers wither away. And therefore, there is no continuity in life. There is change. So, therefore, in your pool you want continuity. How? That is not life. In life, all things are impermanent. You should know that. This is the principle of Buddha, Bhagavan Buddha the doctrine of impermanency. He used to give a lot of highlight to that. All things are impermanent. No thing is endless. Your wealth ends, your pleasures end, your relationships end, your punya also ends. You go to heaven and make a pool there, that pool all, that punya also ends. And you have to abandon that pool and come back. Your religion ends. The religions are continuously evolving. At one time we were worshipping Agni, Indra, or Indra. They used to worship Indra. Nowadays nobody worships Indra. Nobody worships. They don't even know that there is Indra Sahasranama. They don't even know that only a few people know about it. They are busy with Venkateshwara Sahasranama, Shiva Sahasranama, and Lalita Sahasranama. They are busy with those things. Nobody even knows about Indra Sahasranama. So the religion is also not permanent. What is permanent? So in our childhood everybody used to worship Rama, but nowadays they are not worshipping Rama. They are, they are building Baba temples, collecting money and building Baba temples. And Rama nobody wants. Nobody wants to build Rama temple also. So there is always change in that pool and there is death in that pool. So, therefore, what is this permanency? So, therefore, you have to understand this personal life is like a stagnant pool. And uh, one has to realize that his swarupa, his essential nature, has nothing to do with this stagnant pool. His essential nature is distinct, 
एतद् विलक्षण एतद् इज दट पोल स्टैग्नेंट पोल इम्पर्मनेंट ट्रांसिएंट डेप्थ क्षरम इट इज डाइंग पूल इज स्टैग्नेंट इट इज स्मेलिंग बैड दट इज द पोल ईगो स्मेल्स वेरी बैड पीपल डोंट लाइक एन ईगोटिस्टिक पर्सन दे मूव अवे फ्रॉम हिम एंड सो यू आर नॉट दट पोल दट पर्सनल लाइफ इज नॉट यूअर लाइफ दट पर्सन यू आर नॉट दट पर्सन इज नोन टू यू द ईगो यू आर डिस्टिंक्ट फ्रॉम ऑल दैट अहम एतद् विलक्षण विंध्यात अहम ब्रह्मेति निर्मलम एतद् विलक्षण विंध्यात विंध्यात और विद्यात वी से विंध्यात नाउ बिकॉज आनंदगिरी से विंध्यात सो वन हैज टू गेन दिस विषम इट्स ए विषम an understanding that is what you have to gain shankara said in one place vida labhe vida jnane vida praptau labha there is another dhatu labha gati prapti moksha all mean the same <coughs> that is how the language goes so vindet that is vindet is from उपनिषद विंध्यात हियर विंध्यत देर विंध्यत इज विधिलिंग विंध्यात इज आशियर लिंग दट इज दिट डिफरेंस देर फॉर यू हैव टू रियलाइज यू हैव टू गेन युअर ट्रू युअर ट्रू नेचर विच इज नॉट दिस पूल विच इज नॉट दिस स्टैग्नेंट पूल एट ऑल इनफैक्ट विच इज वेरी डिस्टिंक्ट from this stagnant pool of me and mine syndrome you have to understand that how to understand now that is the question how i am done with etad vilakshanam part how to understand and if you understand what will happen nirmalam all this come or impurity is in the pool all of it is in the pool all religious conflicts belong in the pool they don't belong in this fifth flowing life they belong in the pool they 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 are eternally fighting with each other advaita vishishta advaita advaita eternally fighting everlastingly fighting that that is not part of the swift flowing life it is part of the pool only so how to come out of this pool how to come out you have to come out and when you come out of the pool means when you step out of the personal life you will be stepping out of the egotism in a way when you step out of that egotism you know what will happen you will step out of time because time is in that pool you step out of space means you step out of names and forms that is space and you step out of time means you step out of birth and death so you can step out you have to step out and when you step out what happens aham brahma that is what happens that is why where i am driving the whole discussion aham brahmeti so i was uh, sitting with a mahatma somebody came a discussion was uh, going on and the mahatma is talking with him in the discussion that person insisted he was uh, very sure aham brahmana that is what he is pushing aham brahmana ha mean that is the quality of the pool you know aham brahm he is not saying aham manushya aham manushya is a very expansive vision it is but he is pushing aham brahmana ha so the one who identifies with the brahmanism the rest of the truth will uh, defeat him the one who identifies with the kshatriyism 
the rest of the reality will defeat him. Like that there are sentences in the Upanishads. Yaha Brahma Veda Brahmatam Paradat Yonyatratmanaha Brahma Veda Brahmanism is outside of me, is defeated by Brahmanism. Kshatram Tam Paradat Kshatriism is outside of me, he is defeated by Kshatriism. Now what happened in India? Shudraism is outside of Atma. Shudraha Tam Paradat Yonyatra Atmanaha Shudram Veda. The Shudra is outside of Atma. He is outside of myself. He is not included. Now the Shudras are getting back. You know that? Shudras are getting back. Is it not so? You, you should have included them long back. Huh? So, anyway, I digress. This Mahatma, that person, Aham Brahmanaha. Then the Mahatma said, Yeah, you are a Brahmana, I understand. But then, uh, this is uh, this country. What is this country? Hindustan. Means what? The country of the Hindus. Then who are you? Are you Hindu or not? I am a Hindu. But then just now you said Brahmana. Huh? And now you say I am a Hindu. Good. You have stepped out from the pool, right? But then uh, how much effort it, uh, you, it took for you to step out of the pool and declare yourself as Hindu? How much effort it took, you tell me? He thought and said, no, no effort is required. Good. Good. It doesn't require effort. If it requires effort, you have to say it is difficult. How can you say it is difficult? It doesn't require effort. Then he said, yeah, yeah, I understand. Aham Hindu. He was a wise man and open and open-minded. Therefore, he said, good, good, Swamiji, I am a Hindu. Then he said, there are um, other religions also in our country, not only Hindu. There are Christians, there are Islamic people. So, they are all Indians. Bharatiya. So, are you not uh, an Indian? He asked. Then that man said, yes, I am an Indian. So now how much effort to, it took for the Hindu to become Indian? No effort. It doesn't require effort. In fact, it is the personal life which is uh, stuck with effort. So much effort there to make artha, to make kama, to worship, to propitiate all the gods and goddesses and acquire the merit so that you are eligible for heaven. That is all effort. What you call dharma is effort, motivated effort that leads to struggle and conflict, endless conflict. Therefore, in expansion, there is no effort required. Only understanding is required. All expansion is beauty, is a nectar, amrutam. All contraction is death. Yadalpam tanmartyam yovai bhuma tadamrutam. So, expansion happens by understanding. It doesn't happen by effort. Now this expansion I will discuss and complete for today's class. The expansion is, let us start with the pool life. What is the pool life? Me and mine. Me and mine. You know a little mathematics? I take a model from Swami Ramatheta. So the model is a circle. You know circle? Circle has a center and a radius. Radius defines the curvature. If radius is small, curvature is more. If radius is more, curvature is less, right? Curvature or concavity, you can say that. Okay? Now, this is circle. Are you getting circle? There are what are called limiting circles. Means, the circle, you reduce the radius, reduce, 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 make it close to zero, limitation, limit zero, that is the point circle, right? It becomes a point. That it? Then increase the radius, increase, increase, increase. 
increase the radius to infinity, that becomes a straight line. Means infinite concavity, that becomes a straight line. Why earth looks flat to you? Because the radius is big. It's a globe, but the radius is big. Concavity is big, that's why it looks flat. Right? So these are the limiting circles. You got it? The pool is the other end of the limiting circle. And Aham Brahma is the other end of the limiting circle. You got it? So, you start with the pool, me and myself. Me and mine. Me and mine. That is the pool. Now you expand the pool. How do you expand? You get married. And give birth to children. Now you love your wife and children. So the pool has expanded. The concavity has expanded. Now it is not me and my mine, me and mine. It is me and my family. Therefore the concavity, which was very narrow earlier, it has expanded. And that now includes my wife and my children. Me, my wife and my children. Suppose you identify with the caste. Then all caste people are included. Me, my wife, my children and my caste people. Don't you see that? Hmm? Suppose you expand it further to include all religionists. Castes are many, but religion is one. That is Hinduism. Whereas in Islam or Christianity, etc., there are many denominations, not castes, many denominations, but religion is one. Okay? In Hinduism, castes are many, gods are also many in a way, but it is one religion. So you identify with that religion, me and my co-religionists. Now the circle has become quite big and you now include all the religionists in your concavity. You are getting it? You further expand it. Why should you stop it in the discussion? I am Indian now. Why should you stop it? I am Indian. Why don't you say I am a human being? Our Prime Minister says, Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam. That is his slogan. And he presents India as Vishwa Bandhu. That is how he puts India forward. India is the, the kith and kin with the entire world. Vishwa Bandhu. In India, we don't say, uh, God bless India. We don't say that. That is not how we say. We say, God bless all. Huh? Sarve bhavantu sukhinaha. That is what we say. We don't hear the Nara, God bless England. God bless the king. God bless the queen. We don't hear uh, such a Nara. We hear only this. So we have that spiritualism. But at the same time, we have very narrow, me and my caste, that also we have. And we, reduce, we look at the other person as a low person, because based on the birth or whatever, that also we do. So we do the Aham Brahma thing, and we do the worst pool thing also. You see, when Narendra Modi ji performed consecration ceremony of the Ramajanma Bhumi temple. One Shankaracharya did not come. He is a Jagat Guru. What is this Jagat Guru? They don't allow anybody to come near except a few select people of a given caste, but present themselves as Jagat Guru. What, what is this Jagat Guru thing? And there is a big controversy about Jagat Guru between Vaishnava Acharyas and uh, these Acharyas. Big controversy was there. So they pulled me also into that controversy. I gave a small talk on this Jagat Guru thing. So that Shankara Acharya is a religious head. One of the four, they, they, they flaunt, we are four. They tell, we are not five. Please note, that also they tell. Amazing. 
under that Shankaracharya told, openly told, in a public gathering like this, openly told, I am not going to Ramajanma Bhumi. Somebody asked a satsanga, question answer, and he allows that. Generally, they don't allow question answers, but this Swami allows. And uh, so somebody asked, why don't you go to the Ramajanma Bhumi temple? In fact, he gave a statement against it. Then he said, you know what he said? A Shudra is doing the puja, that's why I am not going. He said it. In so many words, he said it. It never came in the newspapers. Then how do I know? I was in Rishikesh. This Swami came there. And uh, these Swamis, whosoever comes to Rishikesh, they stay in our ashram. <laughs> because the rooms are clean and food is good. <laughs> Very clever. Uh, so he stayed in our ashram purposefully because of this reason. And then uh, many of his devotees were there along with him a dozen of them. One of them came to my class and I was talking of uh, the Catholicism. We are all one. That is what I am talking. And the moment I came out of the class like this, he, he, he uh, stopped me and asked a question. How can you say that? He asked me, why not? No, no, our Shankaracharya doesn't admit it. Why? What is the problem? Uh, so, this is the reason. All are not same. Shudra are not same. And then I asked him, I understand your Shankaracharya did not go there. Is this the reason? He said, yes. Oh, he said it? He said, yes. He said, in the group of people he said, and I heard him saying it a few times. First hand evidence. What I am saying is second hand. Okay? But what I got is first hand. He said that. And they did not go for that reason. And there are some other Shankaracharyas who subscribe to that view. But they don't say it. They are politically correct. They don't say it. They don't go also. They bless from a distance. What are you thinking? People are not ready to come out of their pools. Very unfortunate. So you allow. You came up to the Indian, we are Indians. You have expanded, included all Indians into that concavity. Now we say, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha. God bless all. Means you expand, your vision expands to such a point that includes all human beings. No, no, there are terrorists. But there are rattlesnakes in Arizona. So now what shall we do? All life is bad just because there are rattlesnakes. They are also part of life. The humanity comes with variety. That is all mitya, maya context it is. The essence is the same. Therefore, you don't find a reason not to expand. You find the right reasons to expand and include all. Concavity. All sarve bhavantu sukhinaha, you have to say. You should not say sarve except a particular people which we, whom we designate bhavantu sukhinaha. You should not say like that. God bless all. All including evil, yes. Including uh, uh, Satan, yes. Including the devil, yes. In Hindu dharma, all devils are blessed. Ravana Sura, when he dies, his atma goes and merges in Rama. When Kamsa was killed, his atma goes and merges in Sri Krishna. Essentially, they are one. Okay? Therefore, so all humans are one. Then, all living beings are one. Why humans? All living beings are one. You should expand. You should not hurt any living being. In India, they hurt the elephants. Elephant is a huge animal. We worship elephant god. But we bind elephants and hurt them. One elephant was in chains for 35 years. And the legs, they were hurt by these chains. 
35 years it was in chains. It never knew what is life without chains. It carries God around. What do you mean by carrying God around? Why should you have that kind of a meaningless, preposterous ritual in the first place? Why don't you think of the elephant? Then a lady from Germany, she is a Christian, she is not a Hindu. She came, she loves elephants. She waited for, the, for them to sell that elephant. They won't sell, but finally they sold it. Because it has become very old and it is not serving the purpose properly. There are young elephants have come and so they sold that elephant. They sold, they can give free. No, they want money. The temple people don't give anything free for that matter. I have a feeling like that. They sell prasada, but they will give elephant free. <laughs> she purchased the elephant. And the first thing she said is, now papers are signed, money is given. Then she said, remove the chains. First time after 35 years, chains were removed. You know what? There were tears in the eyes of the elephant. Elephant was expressing its emotions of freedom. Then it was carefully taken to a rehabilitation center where the veterinary doctors have treated that elephant for three months in a more open space. And then it was carefully taken to the forest in Kerala and allowed to walk into the wilderness. And that lady was crying with joy. Is she not Aham Brahmasmi? She should be, uh, she should belong to our religion. Is it necessary? She should worship the same God that I worship. Is it necessary? Not necessary. She is the true religionist. So all life you have to include. All life is myself. You have to step out of that pool. All life is myself. And finally you have to say, all existence is myself. That is called Aham Brahmasmi, all existence. Let us finish that one, that Vakya. Aham Ayam Brahma, all existence. Iti da Etad Vilakshanam. Distinct from the pool life of the person, Nirmalam, free from impurities, the Atma, Vindyat, one has to gain by understanding. That is the verse. Let us finish the verse now. Avidyakam Shri Radhi. Drushyam budbudavat ksharam Etad vilakshanam vindyat Aham brahmeti nirmalam We say the next verse. You will have an idea what will be tomorrow's discussion. Dehanyatvanname Janma jara karshyala yadaya ha Shabda divishayai sangaha Nirindriyataya na cha Now let us see one or a few questions. Here is a question about wonder. What is bhakti? Bhakti, they talk of bhakti. Bhakti is not ritual. Ritual is karma, not bhakti. So, when you do something with hands or legs, go round, etc., or when you speak something, chant something, etc., that becomes karma. But when you involve the mind, thinking, not just thinking alone, you take deeper. That is the feeling in the heart. So, mind thinking, Understand, deeper understanding, deeper feeling. That is how you go. There it is called bhakti. Okay? So, that feeling, that bhakti is described as the feeling of wonder. 
That is how bhakti is defined. You wonder at the glory of Ishvara. That is bhakti. Suppose there is no wonder in you. Ishvara is sitting in the, before me like an image. The same image that I am worshipping for, for 20 years. My guru also worshipped the same image. That is, a, is that a qualification? Means the same thing repeated routinely, mechanically, day after day, time after time. The, you, you consider that a qualification? I, I look at it as a disqualification. Because there is no wonder left now. No wonder. It is the same God, same mantra, same puja, same harati, natatra surya bhati, na chandra dara. What natatra surya bhati? Natatra surya bhati is a hymn of wonder. That hymn, wonder, even the sun cannot illuminate it. Look at that. That is the wonder. Do you have any wonder in you? If you say no, then I would say there is no bhakti in you. No, no, we are doing many worships, you know that. Maybe you may be doing a lot. But there is no wonder. Wonder is bhakti. When you chant Gayatri, do you wonder? I always wonder. Why? Not that I am superior or anything. My wonder is, what is in the solar orb? And what is here? How, my God, it is the same. How it is the same? How? That is the wonder. Do, do you see the wonder? That is the Gayatri Mantra wonder for me. Okay? Therefore, Shivoham. Did you wonder at Shivoham today morning in meditation or not? You must have wonder in you. That is Bhakti. So, this wonder, it is only an expression. You cannot, exp- the word cannot convey all the vision, all the feeling that is there in your heart. That cannot be conveyed in words, but still we full said a one word. So, the wonder is a beginning of inquiry. Yeah, you begin inquiry when you wonder. Like when you see a flower, you wonder, eh? Hey, this flower is very beautiful. Hey, what, what kind of flower it is? Where from you got that plant? Like that you inquire. There must be wonder. You see, when I, for me, there are a few things up there which do not make me feel wonder. For example, uh, you put a, a bouquet of flowers on the table. I don't wonder. I don't wonder. But if you leave it on the plant, and I walk, and I look at the plant, then I may wonder. You got the point? You decorate something, I do not wonder. But I walk out and look at the rising sun, or the garden, or the plant, or the birds flying in the sky with a V-shape, I wonder. So, that feeling of wonder. So, if you see this world with the sense of wonder, so the world becomes full of wonder, which is true. And uh, the body-mind also, if you identify with it, it becomes a pool. But if you don't identify with it, you merge with the world. Body belongs to the world. Mind also belongs to the cosmic intelligence. Then it becomes a wonder. The moment you say, my, it is not a wonder anymore. When you don't say, my, it becomes a wonder. When you say, my son, no more wonder, only attachment. A young man, there is wonder. Seeing everything with wonder. Everything means uh, uh, the, uh, Vibhuti Yoga is there in Gita. Seventy-two Vibhutis, glories are pointed out. And when, a, when you look at any one of them, it gives a sense of wonder. That is how it is. For me, when I look at atoms, I feel a sense of wonder. When I look at molecular rearrangement, one molecule, Without any outside uh, impetus, by itself, it rearranges. It finds a different uh, posture and sits in that posture. That is the rearrangement. I wonder. An electron excited, leave it uh, to itself, it comes down and sits in the lowest orbit, lowest energy orbit. So this kind of a behavior in in the world, it makes you wonder. And uh, 
So this is a vision and this discovery itself is a wonder. Is it correct? Yes. Is it correct is the question. The rest of it is all an explanation only. Therefore, it is really not a question. It is really a description and we all agree with it. Okay? Then, you see, here is a question. Eh? It is not phrased entirely right. But then let me say, is it correct? Ananda Mayakosha precedes the mind. No. Mind is Mano Mayakosha. Intellect is Vijnana Mayakosha. Ego is Ananda Mayakosha. Okay? Ego that is seeking jo- uh, fulfillment. Ego that wants the pleasure. Pleasure seeking ego. That is the Ananda Maya, Bhokta. So, therefore, uh, all the three put together, Manomaya, Vijnanamaya, Anandamaya, put together constitute the Antakarana, the inner organ. In the Upanishad, the same inner organ, which we call mind, is divided into three levels. They are all the same Antakarana. But if you want to put a gradation, then first comes Manomaya, then comes Anam, Vijnanamaya, intellect, and then comes Anandamaya, the enjoyership, that is the Anandamaya. Okay? There is still a bit of mind in it, it is all the same mind, within mind only the three. Therefore, uh, the answer is very clear. I experienced Ananda a few times, no surprise, because you are Ananda. If you don't experience, you have to wonder, why am I not experiencing Ananda? What happened to me? You have to think about it. Okay? You, you have to really get concerned about it also, Suppose I suppose. Why, how come I am not feeling myself happy? How come I am not cheerful? How come I am not naturally joyous? You, you should get concerned about it. Because uh, something is blocking all this. Because your Swarupa is Ananda. Therefore, uh, when you feel happy sometimes, I am not surprised. I am only surprised. Why don't you feel happy all the time? The mind was completely quiet. Yes, that, that, that is when you feel happy. I felt an acute sense of peace and love. Good. And perception still took place. Perception is there. Uh, means uh, a little mind is there. Yeah, a little mind is there. Even when we say the mind is quiet. A little mind is there. Because uh, you hear my words when I say your mind is now quiet. You agree with it? Agree with it, right? So even to know what I said and to agree with uh, that, you need a little mind. Okay, you take it in the right spirit. We say mind is quiet. Doesn't mean mind is dead. A little mind is still there. That answers the sixth. Ah, Anandamaya Kosha, the self-seeking ego is the Anandamaya Kosha. That should go away. That is, that is part of the pool only. Yeah, it, has, it is part of the pool only. It is not Brahma. Anandamaya is not Brahma. Anandam Brahma. Anando Brahma. Ah, yes, it is the reflection only. Not just the reflection. The reflection becomes ego which seeks pleasure for itself. That is the Anandamaya Kosha bondage. Om Purnamada Purnamidam.